everybody, and welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite movie review podcast. I am Simeon Jimmy, wasting the final day of the year talking about this dog shit fucking movie when I could be doing anything else. Uh, joined by three lovely companions. I figured Matrix 4 might not have four people on the panel. So sitting to my right is one Eggy Eggman. That's right. Oh, I can't wait to discuss this incredible film today. Thank you so much for having me. And joining us today also is Low Res Wonderbread. I'm happy to be back and talk about this atrocious film with you guys. And our special guest star today is the one and only Kino Corner. Hey guys, what's going on? Um, yeah, uh, I, I might have COVID, so uh, you'll also get uh, my COVID results are going to be coming in live. Well, what do you think podcast. people are more interested in? Our review of The Matrix <laughs> or you having COVID? Because maybe we should just jump the gun, go straight to the COVID test and see if you truly are a plague rat. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to blame uh, the Wachowskis or just, I guess, just Lana Wachowski for this one. Uh, well. So if I have COVID, you know blame the matrix because i got the <laughs> symptoms while i was watching the matrix resurrections you know i did and read a uh, medical journal it was really published in real trusted science they said your exposure to uh high rates cringe. of g maybe like let's say five g's perhaps uh, <laughs> is likely to manipulate your vulnerability to certain things so uh, yeah the matrix they got all these numbers there's got to be at least five g's and all those green numbers <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I think there's a basis for this. Yeah, thank God this movie was a flop, because Matrix 5G would have just been a, a true <laughs> pandemic. Which one oh, of you is yeah. crunkling papers? Kino, can that's you keep me. your I... fucking hands to yourself? <laughs> no, that's I, I'm just taking my uh, COVID, COVID kit, COVID test. Do you still have to the, shove uh... a thing all the way up your nose into your brain, or did they make something sophisticated yet? Well, I'm not going to shove it all the way up into my brain. It's kind of retarded. But, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> That's why I've never taken the COVID test. <laughs> well, I got to take the COVID test or else I can't go to the New Year's party tonight. Well, shove so, that shit up your nose. Let's hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, fuck I, that. Like, I'm, really, I'm really sensitive when it comes to my nose. So it's like, oh, my eyes are watering right now. Yeah, it's, I bet. Uh, um, Still, I feel like I. I feel like I feel like more than I felt during the bait. Just imagine Fauci is kissing your forehead while you do it to give you the strength to enjoy this. I love all oh, Kino's oh. noises. It goes between Medea sound effects to three scooges. <laughs> yeah, if he was I, acting I, I, in a movie, I'd say he's overacting. Oh fuck! Hey, are you? Oh. Okay, this is going up to my brain. How long does this take? I'm trying to get... <laughs> oh no, oh. it's ruined. You need a new one. Go spend another $100. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is that how much they are now? Well, like a box. I don't know how many's in one. What? It's a racket, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is a racket. They cost a lot, but I should have invested got, in COVID home kits uh, uh, three years ago. I would have been rich. You probably would have been. I'm sure somebody did. Nancy Pelosi. So when well, do we get the she, results? At the end of the podcast? Uh, no, you're gonna get the results in about 20 minutes. Okay. Well, let's begin discussing the movie five minutes yeah. into the podcast. Then, Low Res, what did you think of The Matrix Four? Well, I, I wanted to know, did any of you guys feel compelled to put on a dress after watching this movie? <laughs> that was the underlying intent of this. Hey, did you guys ever read that message board story about how the Wachowski, well, at least one Wachowski went trans? I thought they both did. Well, they they both did, but I know the story about one. I don't know the story about the... The brother seems a little suspicious to me. I feel like that's a PR thing, and uh -oh. he's not into it, and that's why he didn't do this movie, why he doesn't stick around and that's why lana the is guy. the the big name and whoever the other person is is not so big i think so well so here here's what happened you guys know who buck angel is yeah i know who buck breaker is <laughs> <laughs> um so buck angel is a very convincing uh female to male uh porn pornographic actor okay and uh this buck angel fellow or ma'am depending on your perspective on the world uh was dating a dominatrix 
And this dominatrix would go see Lana Wachowski, formerly Larry Wachowski, back in the early 2000s, and would say, hey, Larry, I want you to come out to this club tonight, but I want you to dress as a woman to, like, humiliate him. That was what he, what he would get off on. And he kept doing this enough to the point where he eventually became a woman. And then people started... Spe- and these, these message board posts are from, like, 2000 two or something 2005 started Ooh. speculating well is this going to have an effect on the matrix sequels well i can say clear as day having watched this i think it did indeed have an effect on the matrix sequels i don't know uh so nobody else is aware of this nobody else is aware of the social conditioning of larry wachowski to lana wachowski by buck angel's lover I guess this is a new form of buck breaking for uh, for the Caucasian <laughs> and or Middle Eastern uh, variety. But uh, no, Truly. I'm very happy and proud to say that I was completely oblivious to this until moments ago. Well, I want to. I need you to explain this to me. And just to be clear to everybody, everybody at home, I have never seen any Matrix movie. I thought it would be funny to just jump in at number four and see if it stands on its own as a film. So when I hear people saying uh, retroactively that the Matrix movies are a trans allegory, uh, I've never seen the movies to begin with. So can either of you explain this so-called allegory and how the the film is a one-to-one with being trans? Um, I You know what? Even the movies themselves, they, they don't even talk about the allegories, and I, I think it's a uh, um, it's a retcon of sorts because That's what the it movie, seems like. because the original movie is a take on um, Baudrillard's simulation and simulacra, as long as like, as well as like it's like a mix of simulation and simulacra with Alice in Wonderland and cyberpunk stuff, right? And that's the original film. Um, and a sort of a Christ figure, I mean, cause Neo dies in the original comes back, you know, as like this more powerful version of himself. And, um, so Gandalf, well, I mean, the Christ figures are, are, you know, very common in, uh, in, in media and literature. Did so. Jesus really come back more powerful? He kind of came back and said, fuck y'all, I'm out of here. And then left. No, he, 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 he comes back. As, I don't remember uh, Jesus coming back and killing the devil. He kind of just fucked off to heaven. <laughs> Well, I won't get into it. All I'm saying is Gandalf is better than Jesus in every uh, storytelling way. Uh, But what I'm saying is that I'm gonna stick up for Jesus because uh, (laughs) I saw Gandalf and he was like in that he was like bent over that table in green screen and he was crying. (laughs) And listen, I'm just saying, you know, Jesus, he didn't have to green screen and he didn't start crying. I'm sure Jim Caviezel cried like a bitch the whole time filming that movie. But, okay, so what I'm saying is that the original, it was big into Baudrillard's idea of simulation, right? The idea that we live in a simulation, but it kind of gets it, it, it gets it incorrect um, because they actually sort of take what Baudrillard was saying literally, um, whereas in his philosophy, it's just, it's more about how, uh, it, it's more of a cultural crit- critique than saying that we actually live in a simulation. So they, but they made this movie as sort of like because they're fanboys or fan girls, or however you want to look at it, uh, of Baudrillard. But then Baudrillard, the philosopher, um, saw it and he said something like, he said something along the lines of like, this is the kind of movie that The Matrix would make about itself. He totally shot them down <laughs> and and disavowed and disavowed the movie. And then they asked him to come on for the sequels, and he said no. So they, they base their movie off the philosophy of some guy. The guy said, no, you got it wrong, you retards. So now they're saying, well, actually, it was about being trans the whole time. We, we, we never <laughs> yeah. tried to make it about that guy. Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay. And so how's this new, <laughs> Lores, how does this new movie uh, give you trans dreams? Uh, well, I mean, think about this, right? If you watch that first Matrix movie, Keanu Reeves has short hair. But in this one, oh, he has long hair. So, well, I think, I think the I think the answer to that is that he wants to keep playing John Wick and he's never going to shave or cut his hair for any movie because he looks exactly the same in every movie for the last five years. Right. He even so looks the same about that. There's a there's a shot. I mean, there's multiple shots of him. There's full on scenes of him bald. Is that just a very good visual effect? Because yeah, pretty convincing to me. Yeah, he's not shaving until John Wick is done. Yeah, I would say that was makeup. You could tell that his. Um, 
that he did shave his facial hair for real though because you think so yeah because uh i mean with all due respect to keanu reeves he, he maintains a very good appearance for his age and i look older than he does right now because i don't take care of myself <laughs> you do uh, so that's just what it is but when he shaves you could tell um yeah he's got a little bit of uh some of that the, the skin uh, around his uh lower third is a little more aged. You can kind of Are tell. you sure? Because I, I think it's I all CGI. I Those mean, Marvel movies can make Robert Downey Jr. look 20 again. You know, it's but possible. Think about Warner Brothers I, I didn't CG. look into he it, but... He didn't it, have Henry Cavill mouth from Justice League. It didn't look like a PlayStation 1 Well, that's because that they just... suck. <laughs> that movie was a big mistake. I think uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League might actually make it on my top 10 of the year. Zack yeah, Snyder's might. Justice League was good. Mm -hmm. It was. It was uh, terrific. I think that was the uh, probably the last great fantasy film that's come out in a while. Yeah. It's certainly better than uh, the Marvel stuff. Well, Kino, let's hear your thoughts on this new movie. I know you're a big Matrix fan. You said the original <laughs> inspired you to become a filmmaker and that you agreed with the philosophy about being trans. So what did you think of this new movie? Yeah. <sighs> this new movie. Uh, okay. So I did not like this new movie at all. What? Uh, and then what are you our, transphobic? And then our mutual friend uh, and and uh, very famous uh, vegan. I want to point this out because I think it's relevant. Emp Lemon DM'd me, tell me about how actually the Matrix Four is actually really good because it sucks, but it sucks on purpose. And he's like, No, Kino, you don't understand. It's the Freddy got fingered of the Matrix movies. Well, yeah, they and... pretty much say that in this film verbatim in the scene when they say our parent company, Warner Brothers, is forcing us to make a sequel to the trilogy that we don't want to make and that they would yeah. make it without us if we didn't. So I think that was pretty blatant. Yeah, it, it, but that's the, that's my problem, right, is that it's almost too blatant. They have like 15 minutes of all these like meta jokes and things like that, you know. Like, Which is oh, a big fuck is... you to the studio. That's what Freddy Got Fingered was all about, right? Tom Green took their yeah. money and just fucked around with it. Yeah, yeah. And but but with this movie, they, they they're so they're so open about like you know here are all the different ways that people interpreted the Matrix and and everything like that. It's like okay, that's I, I guess that can be fun or something like that. But then the movie then turns into. Uh, just a really shitty Matrix movie, and and it's not even shitty like it's not even shitty in like a uh, um, wow this is in you know it's I, I wouldn't even say it's like on the Freddy got fingered levels of just you know um, being out there it's just boring you, you know what I mean it's just a boring kind of bland movie yeah Aggie can attest to this uh, yesterday while we watched the film I yawned non-stop and as soon as the movie was over I did not yawn again the rest of the night so something about this movie was really releasing some things in my brain to make me want to go to sleep yeah the, yeah I, I know that like uh, um, this movie may be saying wake up sheeple but it's actually putting people to sleep so maybe <laughs> this is <laughs> So maybe this movie is the Matrix making a movie about itself, right? And actually the red pill that you take in this version of the Matrix is the blue pill in our version of the Matrix. So if you actually buy into the Wachowski's uh, ideas, that's the real blue pill, but it's being disguised as the red pill uh, by the Matrix in which we live. While we're still talking about the meta nature of the opening scenes, I think the best moment in the entire film is when one of the guys at the game company says, reboots sell, and now this movie is like a complete box office failure. It made $7 million. It lost to Sing Ooh. 2. So the meta commentary in the film is not even correct. They thought this would be a box office success, and it's it, it canceled any future sequels. Yeah, which which might have been what the Wachowskis wanted. Hopefully. I mean, he, uh, I, I think that there is an angle you can have on this film that Lana Wachowski just kind of, you know, said, OK, yes, I agree. And then just made it and made it shitty. Although I if I was to make a movie shitty and I wanted to just kill a franchise, I think I would have gone way above and beyond what Lana Wachowski did. Well, um, I mean, I don't know how you would do that because it was impressive that this slog created uh, 
it was was a two and a half hours worth of slogging but you see the thing is in my opinion or or an opinion i'll give here i thought about this towards i want to say maybe about an hour and 45 minutes into the film as i realized how much was left i was like <laughs> it really feels like uh this was a different movie that somebody like uploaded to YouTube all chopped up with parts missing to like evade copyrights or something. <laughs> Cause it's just like, I'm just sitting here watching it and my, I had to like, my eyes kept gla glazing over cause I'm like, okay, now they're, now they're in the pod again and now they're actually in real life again, but it's actually the guy, that guy's actually the fake guy, but he's not actually really the fake guy because he's really this guy. And then, and then this is happening and then oh, now they're fighting and now they're, you know, but the module, but then also real life, but is it real life? No, they're actually red pill to get into a different life. And I'm it just could like, be that there. Lana Wachowski is an idiot and thinks that a convoluted and intelligent are synonyms. Yeah, I, I actually have. So here, so here's my like overall view of the movie. Right, there's also a lot of uh, clips from the original Matrix trilogy shown. It's like, pretty much a lot half of, clips. There's yeah, going to be a good half hour of this movie that's nothing but, hey, remember when Morpheus was actually Lawrence Fishburne? Yeah. yeah. Why didn't so, he so come he, back? Why'd they replace him so, with no, the black guy, but they keep the old woman? So so this is what I, so this is the feeling that, the overall feeling I got from this movie. So you have them showing clips of the older movies, and then you have people that feel like they're cosplayers playing as, like, Morpheus or playing as Agent Smith and stuff. And it gives off the feeling that this movie is like a channel awesome made oh, matrix oh god <laughs> you're right <laughs> not to mention that whole uh the whole bullet time effect is just like taking regular footage at, and putting it at like uh 20 frames per second instead of 24 <laughs> or 18 frames per second like whoa it's bullet time but whoa but yeah. it's just regular footage we're shaking the camera oh and speaking of which what was that one scene uh god i can't remember what was preceding it but it's i think it's like um when when the, he, when Morpheus meets ne meets Keanu Reeves, you know, at, at the first time in the, in the, the bathroom. In the bathroom. <laughs> it's like was, I'm trying. No, 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 wait, no, no, that's not it. It was um, no, when when uh, when he grabs the blue when he grabs bugs. Uh, As in bunny. Was, there was something around that time, but I can't remember what it was. But then like the camera work. Yeah, they're just they're doing shaky cam yeah. and then putting it in slow motion, and that's their level of special effects. I feel like. The, did the original movie have better effects than this one? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, no. Also, and and, Kino, and and the fight I, scenes I, were I, actually good. What look, were you gonna say? Before we uh, stray away from your, your Channel Awesome comparison, I just want to talk about Jonathan Groff real quick. The new Agent Smith and his Mister Anderson. Did you, his Mister Anderson <laughs> reeked of Doug Walker? You're correct. About <laughs> that. I felt that in that moment. He's far cry from Hugo Weaving's Mr. Anderson. Is it safe yeah. to say if Doug Walker wrote and produced and directed this film, it would have been better? Yes. Unironically, sure. I might have to agree. I completely yeah. agree. There's no, there is no doubt in my mind because there, like Doug Walker, for all things considered, <laughs> he would have made a more coherent film at the very least. <laughs> the special effects, uh, you know, roughly. 60% of the time are on Channel Awesome level. Now, there's a couple of CG, you know, they got the CGI robots in the, you know, in the spaceship, and there's some stuff like that that would be a little, but we're talking just a lot of the on the ground and character focused, uh, you know, and whatever. Yeah, I think he definitely could have done comparable special effects, a more coherent story, dialogue. I mean, come on. They got he, Keanu Reeves has to fight Chad for for like for his uh, his his old flame, and he's got the Chad yeah. hair. By the way, I want to say this, you know, because they did the, the Wachowskis. I think they did say that they browsed 4chan uh, while they were making the film. So he literally has like the like the faux hawk hair too. He's like 60 years old and gray hair, but still. And Chad has a son named Brandon, and at no point did Keanu say, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> you know, if if Doug Walker was Keanu Reeves, then we would have had a really Keno scene where when he gets out of the Matrix, they immediately put him into a prison cell that has a balcony, and he just walks out of the prison cell immediately. And I know that Doug Walker would be like, what? What's going on here? This has a balcony. Like, this is too one of the one of the things freaking out about how uh, um, like why is this plot hole here? 
that would have been funnier. I mean, because there's so many of these like stupid plot holes in this movie. And just to have Doug Walker's, you know, uh, uh, ongoing commentary would have made this a lot more entertaining, uh, to say the least. You could picture his his crew <laughs> filling out the supporting cast in this film, too. You didn't need the new Morpheus. You could have had his, like, go-to black guy. Yeah, his fucking <laughs> black friend. That, that little schlubby girl that pops up in every video. Like, Trinity. Trinity. You sure? Yeah, bring them all in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lindsay Ellis. Lindsay Ellis isn't Twitter working anymore. She could do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, do we have any other constructive criticism other than Doug Walker should have made the movie instead? <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think that we can kind of go through uh, some of the, the points. Here, since a, I have not seen these movies, should I try to guess what the plot is based on the movie I just saw? Because I, I don't know anything about The Matrix. Yeah, this this movie is kind of fan service because they bring back some of the guys from like the matrix sequels yeah but if you don't know who they are then no i didn't know um, who anything i didn't know which people were new which ones were old i didn't know what was going on my guess would be the matrix is uh it's a big computer that they plug people into to uh keep them uh, subservient to I, I guess some sort of shadow government in the future and keanu reeves like becomes self-aware and he's the hero who's going to stop the matrix and he spends three movies doing that and now in this fourth one it's 80 years later and Keanu is like the head of uh, gaming. He makes the greatest video games, and which is just the original films. Yeah, he made. He, he forgot that he was in the Matrix and made them into video games instead. And and then he goes on an adventure for two and a half hours to find his old girlfriend, and that's the entire film. Yeah, yep. is that it? Did I miss anything? No, you didn't miss anything. Oh, and, and I guess he, he, goes, he inspired a, a new generation of blue-haired uh, keyboard warriors to assist him in his journey. Yeah, and and and, the, and like the whole story is, is pointless. He's going just to get Trinity out, and then he's like, okay, because Trinity dies in the, in the third Matrix film, but he is uh, in, a, in a sense bringing her back from the dead. Uh, so death does not movie. matter in these movies. I mean, it's like cape shit, you know? It's like, you, you die. I mean, Neo died in the first one, he came back, so... I mean, this I is what people think is so deep and philosophical, it's basically cape shit with a computer? Uh, yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it basically it is. Um, but they go out, and then he immediately gets put in prison by this lady that runs the outside of the Matrix, Dealey Bob, which didn't make any sense. It didn't, it made even less sense that she's like, yeah, I'm gonna put you in the one cell that has a balcony. Um, so he can just, he, he, they put him in there and he immediately just walks out. He's in that cell for all of about five seconds. Yeah, I don't even remember that scene, so I'm glad yeah. you keep bringing it up. Yeah, and, uh, I, I made a, I made a few notes, um, but yeah, it, the, the movie's just, it's, the Matrix movies have always been a little bit try hard with their, uh, philosophy, <laughs> trying to make, you know, trying to make it like they're real, like pieces of it, you know, great intellectual filmmaking. Yeah, I noticed that and, when halfway through Barney Stinson from How I Met Your Mother, like literally grabbed the, the click remote and hit pause and then gave a five minute speech about philosophy in the movie. I was like, oh, yeah, this should yeah, not be here. The film version of Russell Brand, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't, also, I can't take Neil Patrick Harris serious in no. any role, really. Um, that's probably more, I mean, look, I, I guess it's a, a me problem, but, uh, I'm so used to him as just generic Neil Patrick and also Doogie Howser showing my age here. What you're saying uh, is his performance was not legend, wait for it, dairy. Yeah, that's correct. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he gives his, I mean, he tells his entire dastardly plan in like this long monologue. He gets these long monologues that just drag on where he's explaining absolutely everything in the movie. And the sign that a movie is made by someone who is either has a below average intelligence or is a midwit and thinks that everyone who's going to be watching it is going to have a below average intelligence is the fact that the movie has to tell you and explain the entire film to you in a monologue. Yeah. I think you know? it's because they the philosophy they want to put through just does not translate to the plot of a film so they just like need to make a plot generic enough where they can insert big monologues in the middle it is the most midwit writing i can think of yeah and i 
Here, here's a little quote that I got from the beginning where his one of his like assistants or co-collaborators was talking to him and he was like talking about the old matrix and he goes is it free will or destiny and he goes that was so deep it's like that's <laughs> so many movies have the idea of free will versus destiny like the, the matrix is not special yeah go read that. one piece one piece does it better <laughs> yeah, that's like literally most of literature, most yeah. of the media. <laughs> I want to say, actually, in my opinion, that the fat guy from the gaming company or whatever, really that whole segment around like where they're in the gaming company and it has also his like daily routine following therapy, all of that to me was probably my favorite part of the entire film. I agree. Just because it... um. In a way, it kind of reminded me of how there were parts of Free Guy where, like, all of a sudden the game developer would be like, yeah, and I taught the AI uh, my favorite feminist Marxism books. <laughs> and I think, like, the movie intends for it to be, like, a serious part of the conversation, but it seems like it's, like, a self-aware Reddit fedora tipper when maybe they're not going for that. But, like, that's what this seems to me when he's like... OM OMG Zors, the epic lady has come inside uh, for with which me to uh, to tip my fedora in her direction and then he like goes and Keanu's like being himself and then he's like uh, going through the daily motions and eating fistfuls of blue pill meds <laughs> like when Barney sits in like the whole time I'm like uh, we're watching this and I'm just like meds 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 and then uh yeah, then at the end of that particular therapy scene, he's like, so, my prescription. He's like, yes, of course. And then it starts the, the montage where all like all the Redditors are like, oh, wow, epic upvotes, updutes, reboot, rehash, downvote for the win. And he's just like staring into space and eating his fistful of blue pills. I'm like, so true, so well, true. Here's my question. If this movie is a big allegory for people with uh, dysphoria and mental illness and all these things, what is the message it's trying to portray about therapy because the therapist ends up being the big villain of the movie uh, is the implication that therapy is used to brainwash and control you from ignoring the real problems in life and that they'll just prescribe you medication that keeps you docile uh, this movie seems very anti-therapy yeah i was i was about to say that it seems very anti-therapy um because he doesn't he, he only gets better when he actually uh addresses you know his real life concerns which is uh getting a gf and <laughs> yeah. not going to therapy <laughs> well we see what he looks like see he thinks he looks like keanu reeves but then they like show him in the mirror and he's this morbidly obese he's Bald. got he looks like what's that guy from tekken hike chama or whatever his name is he's got like this crazy like fryer tuck hairstyle <laughs> like it's all like, gray and pointing out yeah. he's a bald cell you know he, he's definitely uh <laughs> You know, this nice lady's bringing her children with her husband, Chad, to the coffee shop. There's this morbidly obese, balding man being introduced as, like, the most upvoted game developer with the most Reddit gold of all time. And he thinks he, like, looks like Keanu Reeves. He's like, hey, baby, how's it going? Yeah, it's me. I make video games. And really, it's just, like, some slob that looks like he just rolled out of a dumpster. And she's like, oh, my goodness, get away. Oh, you're not even Chad. Where's, where's Chad? Chad, please. Let's go, Brandon. We got to get out of here. <laughs> Don't look at him. Yeah. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you could see that as being uh, maybe allegory for dysphoria. But I think that it, that's a pretty good... Uh, uh, that's a pretty good allegory or not even an allegory just a visual of how incels see themselves they see themselves as you know keanu, keanu. Reeves, right wholesome keanu like dashing like everybody wants me when reality, they're just like fat nerds okay kino it's been 20 minutes do you have results yet on your covid test yeah no um i am negative what wow yeah congratulations i just have a normal cold oh so, no that's uh, not possible in this day and age <laughs> yeah, I just have a regular cold that just goes around this time of year. Well, shit. <laughs> there goes my happiness. <laughs> well, there goes my happiness, die. too. You can take for the next 20 minutes of the show. Maybe it's a false positive, false negative. Rather. Yeah, can you take yeah, an th HIV test? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there goes my happiness, too. I was really, I was like, come on. I want a week off of work. Well, I know that COVID <laughs> only kills people 0.01% of the time, but I was really hoping it would get you. <laughs> Wouldn't have no, to do this what... fucking show anymore. <laughs> yeah, and, and then I would, you know, I'd be living in peace because for the rest of eternity, I wouldn't have to watch any more cape shit. 
nah, you're going to hell and the devil's gonna make you watch <laughs> nothing but Marvel movies. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't say that. <laughs> okay, Lorez, let's let's nice. go over to you. I want you to pick the sure. next Matrix-related topic of discussion. Well, I, I wanted to know if you guys even had a particularly high opinion of the Wachowskis prior yeah. to this film, because to me they fall into the same tier as a M Night Shyamalan, where they made it. Uh, you know, you, they got big with one movie that kind of uh, broke the mold and became a pop culture sensation in the early aughts or late 90s. And everything after that has failed to live up to I, As a matter of fact, I think M. Night Shyamalan probably has, uh, on the whole, better movies in his oh, film. I would absolutely agree, yes. I mean, he's got Sixth Sense, Signs. Was that one, The Village? No, the one with the old people. That one was, that one, you know, that one was decent Oh, old? Yeah, old was good. Old? I mean, uh, <laughs> no, no, uh, well, that, I mean, <laughs> the grandparents to be honest, one, right? Yeah, the, whatever the, the, yeah, the, the grandparents. I'm not going to spoil what that one's about, but I mean that one was, uh, you know, that was a twist I didn't expect on that one. Well, Signs is good. It's, I mean, even just the Signs and Sixth Sense, two Signs movies underrated. that I think are good, versus the, the one Matrix that is, you know, a, a, you know, it gave us cool bullet time stuff in video games. It gave us the red pill uh, allegory, which so, has been used to spread disinformation, uh, which is always fun. <laughs> so uh, until yesterday, the only Wachowski movie I've seen is Cloud Atlas. And I'm of the opinion that that's one of the greatest films of all time. So I might be in the minority, but I, I really love Cloud Atlas. That's the one where they're all doing slanty eyes, right? For an hour and a half. Uh, like every Hugo main character. P pulling his eyes back. It's it's six different stories all crammed into one movie. And like in each story, the main actors play a different role. So like Tom Hanks plays like a slave owner in one and then he's like a revolutionary in another and then he's like Asian in the other one but yeah they, they do a lot of uh, <laughs> asian -y eyes in that movie yeah everybody's Have Mickey you, Rourke yeah. and Breakfast at Tiffany's in that film I love <laughs> it I think it's a great movie of the odds did you guys see uh, Jupiter Ascending I did not fuck no oh that one the Wachowskis made that that one is probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen Eddie, <laughs> Eddie Redmayne's villain was uh was absolutely shit and Channing Tatum played as some like dog man from space <laughs> didn't uh, and wait what's the name Meg of the Griffin. what's the name of the guy you just said Eddie Redmayne didn't he yeah. win the Oscar that year the, the same year that that shitty movie came out <clears throat> I think so and for, like theory of everything is, or something yeah for theory of everything and Jupiter Ascending uh opened at the Sundance Film Festival <laughs> for what reason i have no idea they but were proud. yeah to zero fanfare uh not exactly the audience but that movie didn't have an audience mila kunis played as the main character who's a princess from space who's living a you know a shitty life on earth basically she's kind of playing a meg like character except it's mila kunis <laughs> so, you know, so um, hot meg <laughs> hot meg yeah exactly and so then a dog man comes down from space and then says she's a princess and Eddie Redman is a bad guy and he's trying to like uh, harvest. I don't know. It, it's a really convoluted plot. This, I mean, that that's what these guys like to do. These girls, right? These women. These the, the Wachowskis. It, the Wachowskis like to do this. Um, but I will never forgive the Wachowskis for the amount of Reddit cringe they gave us with V for Vendetta. Oh, they made that movie. Yeah. Oh, I kind of like that movie. It's, I, it's I not didn't a, mind V for Vendetta. It, when, no, when it's it not a bad anyway. movie. It, it's it's okay. Like it's 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 an okay film. It's pretty um, good. But but the uh, <laughs> the amount of Reddit cringe we got out of it. Was, what about Speed Racer? Speed Racer is highly Speed debated. Racer. Yeah. People, People will tell you Speed Racer is a masterpiece. That it's uh, you know an unsung classic that has been overlooked. Uh, I haven't seen Speed Racer since it probably came out, and I really didn't like it. Mm. What about you, Iggy? Yeah. Big fan of Speed Racer? Well, I never f actually watched the film. I was uh, a big <laughs> fan of the uh, program, the original program, actually. I don't think... I, I don't remember if they had it on Cartoon Network back in the day. Um, but wherever I got a taste of it, it was pretty catchy, so... Uh, 
I went and uh, I got like the MP3 off of Neo Napster in like 1999 or something like that and I would listen to it a lot because it was very catchy to me. So once I was able to get my hands on some of the original material, whether that was from a DVD or uh, once they had, st when streaming started kind of bubble in the uh, mid 2000s through Winamp pirated streams and stuff like that, there was some Japanese uh, pirated streams that we would tap into on 4chan back then. But um, yeah, so I like that. And as I recall, the stylization of like the trailer, the way that it sort of presented the direction of the movie, it did look like something that would have appealed to me, but there's no way I would know how it was executed necessarily without watching it. So it would be one that I would be interested in seeing, but I could really see it going either way. Yeah, I was a fan of the uh, anime. I grew up watching that as a kid, the original Speed Racer show. But by the time the movie came out, I don't know. I just thought of it as like a kid's like a, a kid's show. And I was like, ah, I'm not really interested in watching kids' films. You know, I'm going to go Racer watch a Marvel out. movie instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, lo look at me now, right? Like, yeah. I, I watch kids' shows for a living. So, um, <laughs> for a living? I don't know about that. It's a little No, generous. no, I'm not making much of a living here. But, uh, <laughs> um, at least I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, um, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't also, like, a big fan of the Wachowskis. Uh, I was very disappointed because I saw, like, all the Matrix movies. Well, not the first one, but I saw the, the Matrix sequels in theaters, and I was disappointed. I mean, Reloaded had some cool action scenes in it, but Revolution sucked. Uh, and, I was about to say, for yeah. some reason, I thought that I was thinking this one was Revolutions, but or I was thinking this one was Reloaded, but uh, I will say one thing. It might just be my smooth brain that wasn't <laughs> digesting all those Reddit upvotes that were being sent in my direction through the writing. <laughs> but when action was taking place on screen, action versus the uh, blabbering and the... Did you know? Guess what, Neo? Think about this. Oh, yeah. And what about that? Ever think about those? <laughs> you know, <laughs> when they shut up and start punching each other, I immediately enjoyed the film about 1,000 times more than whatever was preceding them punching each other. Yeah, but even the action in, in Resurrections, it, it, it is not nearly as good as the action in the original trilogy. The, the whole movie is shot in a really kind of bland way they it, it, it's like they just it's like they didn't even think about uh, making good compositions or shooting things in an interesting way it's just like all right let's just get the action on camera and then during all the action sequences it cuts so much it just constantly cuts when in like the original matrix was kind of about like this taking uh the chinese wire fighting that was really popular at the time and, uh, you know, putting it into an American action movie and you would have the longer cuts, you, you know, because they'd be on wires kind of like flying around doing really cool choreography. And they're not doing that in here. Um, it's just like, yeah, they're punching each other and they're cutting a lot. Um, and they're very just good really, point, yeah. it, there just isn't that much, you, you know, it, it's not visually exciting at all. And, um, yeah, so it's not visually exciting at all. So e even the action sequences, I was I was bored watching them. I also didn't care about any of the characters. Uh, they do almost nothing to make you like bugs. Um, you know the the blue haired woman. Uh, well, then she and like, I don't. Her hair goes back to normal color at some point. Is that right? Well, it. Man, I, I forget. I like. I think, I think it does because it's just like yeah. All of a sudden you're just like, and you're like yeah. It's just, and then there's yeah. It's just like random people, and then they're just like random people are in this random place. Oh, but now guess what? I mean, two and a half hour runtime, and it's just still like whoa. Now this guy's over here, and this yes, I remember. Uh, do you remember back in the Matrix one when this happened? Whoa, that was crazy. <laughs> and then it's that just like is brutal. <laughs> and then yeah. I, and, yeah, it's just well, and then and then so okay, so in the original, Keanu, you know, Keanu Reeves, Neo can like stop bullets. He can you know do all sorts of crazy stuff. You know, he's like jumping off of walls and he's doing all this wire fighting. You know, like flying through the air, all this kind of like cool shit. You know, when I was a kid watching the first Matrix, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Like when they that scene where they go into the lobby in the first Matrix and they have like all the guns on them and they're just like running up the walls. You know, like that was super cool. In this one, it seems like the only 
power that he gets in the Matrix is force push. Like he's just kind of force pushing things away from him, and that's like all he can do. It, like he does, he has hardly any stunts. At least I don't know. Maybe he had, maybe he had some stunts and didn't notice them. But it seems like a lot of what he does is just going like, yeah, I'm just going to do this force push here, force push there, and it's just, it's boring. He, he like, and and the whole the whole conceit too that he's nothing without Trinity. Um, he can't fly without her, and so at the end. The woman takes over, which I, I guess is part of the uh, um, trans sort of allegory, right? Where he needs to embrace his woman side in order to, uh, sur- you know, oh, in you order think to it survive. Was, you don't think it was a conservative uh, political stance that uh, a, a heterosexual relationship is the key to the future, and that if a man and a woman come together, they can do anything? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with a lot of the allegories in this film, right? Is that <laughs> they can be read in diametrically opposing ways very yep. easily. Well, I, I honestly don't give a single fuck about this boring movie, and I wish I didn't watch it, so I think we should wrap this up and go around the horn, everybody give their final thoughts, and say whether or not it was Kino. And, uh, Kino, would you like to begin? Yeah, uh, no, it's not Kino. It's, it's just super boring. Just skip it. That's, yeah, that's it. What about you, Low Res? Uh, this is certainly not Kino. As a matter of fact, let's go back to the run times, two and a half hours. Right. Uh, and just to also go back to the M. Night Shyamalan comparison, he, he had a movie come out this year that was equally ridiculous and equally terrible called Old. That was only about <laughs> 85, 90 minutes and uh, was far more entertaining. So if you want to watch a bad movie from a early aughts auteur, go check out Old. I mean, that's awful, too. But I, I have yeah, to take no, grievance with what you said. I think Old was a better movie. All, they replaced the star of the movie in the last 30 minutes with some nameless 50-year-old man with a fake mole <laughs> on his face. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> that was the plot yeah. of the movie. <laughs> no, but I would still say that old is better just because it's shorter. Yes. It's shorter. It has at least some coherent direction. Uh, the it has hot thing. chicks in bikinis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, caked up instead of old chicks <laughs> that's right yeah no 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 chad sloppy quadru quad you know, i don't got enough exponents for how much how much she's been ran through but anyway <laughs> what about you uh Iggy? is this kino i will say that uh, this movie was absolutely terrible in my opinion <laughs> in fact you know after hearing kino say uh, now when i'm actually thinking back to how good the choreography was in the first movie you know it's sort of like um it's like when you're a kid and you're really poor and you get like one of those like like pre-made handheld games that has like Donkey Kong in it and you're like, oh man, this is fun because I have nothing, you know, and then you like see some like super awesome game and you're like, oh, actually, I guess this isn't really all that. And that kind of, I had that little realization there when he was talking about the choreography comparison. But I mean, yeah, it is, uh, I don't know if I could think of a single redeeming factor of this entire movie. I think my life is just uh, objectively worse for having <laughs> sat and tried to make sense of this convoluted garbage and uh, flush it right down the toilet. That's what I got to say. No good, in my opinion. And it's very unrealistic at the end because the woman leaves Chad for the virgin gamer. Well, I mean, but she is like 70 years old, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would guarantee if I saw this at the movie theater in the dark room in a reclining seat, I would have fallen asleep. I actually had to actively fight my own brain to stay awake watching this, and that's a sign of just a dog shit boring movie. As soon as it was over, I was elated and awake and running around so excited that I no longer was being exposed to this. And I, I think I really should go watch the original Matrix and then just forget that the other three exist, because it sounds like that movie is actually pretty fucking kino and uh, this movie yeah i agree with everybody else just don't even waste your time it's legitimately a waste of time you only get 80 some odd years on this planet and if you waste two and a half of those hours watching this shit i I pity you i pity myself i pity all four of us (laughs) yeah people should actually pay us money um they should uh, PayPal us lots of money just for all the uh, emotional and medical damages incurred right. to us, you know, through trying to provide them with a little bit of entertainment. Now, have you guys seen people on Twitter defending the movie? Because I saw one of the dumbest tweets I've ever seen. Somebody said, 
Uh, I can't believe people are saying Free Guy was a better film than Matrix 4. This is causing the death of creativity in cinema. And I'm thinking, uh, did you see the same movies? Because Matrix 4 is a studio mandated film made by a, an artist who did not want to make it. And Free Guy was at least an original concept. Like, Free Guy is a much better movie, in my opinion. Would either, or would any of you guys uh, disagree with that? I didn't see Free Guy. I have not seen Free uh, Guy either, but I, I have seen have. Uh, people running defenses. I mean, I, I think a lot of that comes down to, with films like this anyway, it seems like the critics on Rotten Tomatoes rush to come out with a, a positive score for the film. So you start to see it go in a direction where it's like, oh, well, we're, we're going to be 75%, 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. And then it gradually wanes down to about 65%. And you have a lot of people in the camp that double down and go, no, 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 this is actually a good movie. Look, I stand by my initial opinion where they feel a, a sort of pressure to, uh, you know, pride this big movie that's coming out and, you know, has elements to it that want to be upholded or whatever. And uh, I, I, I just think it's people not wanting to come to terms with the fact that, oh, yeah, that that franchise from when you were a kid or whatever uh, just produced a really shit movie. And this is not a good film by any measure. Do you think there's also an element of... Uh, people wanting to support it just because it is now a, a trans allegory. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I, I, think, I think it's yeah. that. I think it's nostalgia. Um, there's a. There's a. There's several different reasons why they're saying that this is, this movie's good, and I, I think deep down inside, uh, they're probably aware of the fact that this it, it's just a turd. Yeah, I would say so. I enjoyed Free Guy for what it was. I can see that it is maybe something. I mean, first off, it's certainly better than this movie. Um, but yeah, I can see how it has that kind of lower common denominator where, you know, they're talking about a lot of things that people know. It's got like this video game basis, this MMO kind of basis that a lot of people are familiar with. They're making references to things people are familiar with. And I would say just because you want to try and be a sued midwit, midwit, and like, you know, try to add some filler and some you know pseudo philosophy it up a little bit or whatever doc and be like well you, you like that lowest common denominator stuff you know this is way more creative because it's got sued midwit stuff in it no no <laughs> <laughs> it, that doesn't make it better to to try and uh dump your sued shit all over it and be like oh, no but look at this well no. free guy might be making references to like uh, the avengers and stuff but this movie's just making references to the matrix like they're both just yeah. bullshit mm. movies about making references to things that are more popular so <laughs> they're basically the same thing but one of them has neil patrick harris hitting pause and giving you exposition for 10 minutes straight so which one's better i think it's pretty clear i agree Anyway, I think that's it for this session of Kino. Let's do some plugging. Low res, what you got going on? Uh, go to Low Res Wonder Bread on Instagram. I am promoting uh, a whole bunch of stuff related to my my upcoming film, Mass State Lottery, as well as some other projects. And that's really the the best hub to meet me at right now. now so this movie, Instagram. this movie that you made, that's coming out in 2022. That's right. I'm trying to get it out by uh, hopefully July. I mean, it really depends if I, I'm able to sell this to somebody or not, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm looking forward to uh, me and Kino coming on to talk about your movie. And maybe as revenge, or just to be fair, uh, you and I, Lorez, should do an episode reviewing his movie. <laughs> I, I am down for both. Okay, cool. Kino, well, what you got? Yeah. Um, I'm not really putting out anything this month. I'm making a whole lot of content right now. Um, working on a lot of videos at the moment, but I'm going to be back up and running in February. And I just bought plane tickets to go to Monkey's Place. Oh, shit. Yeah. So at the end of the month, this month, Monkey, I'm assuming Eggy, you're going to come down for the weekend. I think so. And yes. what was it that you wanted, if we're making a video about a Serbian film, you said that at the premiere of the movie, they made people like squeeze lime juice into yeah. their eye, and you want Eggy yeah. to do that for this video? Yeah. Eggy, did you yes. agree to that? Well, as long as it doesn't make me go blind. I mean, I'm already partially blind, so it can't be that much worse, right? <laughs> no, I guess so it was, not. I, I, text, I texted Eggy this a couple months ago, because I think we're... We were going to do it for Halloween, but we didn't. Yeah, we we're going to do it for Halloween, and then a whole bunch of shit came up, and I couldn't do it. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, 
at the premiere for a Serbian film in Austin uh, at uh, one of those festivals in Austin. Um, the filmmakers had uh, people from the audience come up, snort a line of salt, squeeze lime into their <laughs> eyes, and then drink tequila. Um, hey, and one said, of those three things is something Aggie really enjoys doing. <laughs> hey, so I like salt. What yeah. can I say? No. <laughs> <laughs> and they said that that, uh, that simulates the experience of being in Serbia. But yeah, we're going to try to do a uh, Channel Awesome type uh, remake Uh-oh. of the <laughs> Serbian film. I don't know if I agree to that part of it, but... <laughs> No, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm working on the video script right now. So, but okay, yeah, Aggie, what that, you got that is coming up. I'm going to release that as the Valentine's Day special. Oh, good. Oh, if boy. we have it done by then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Once we get out of the hospital. Anyways, uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram <laughs> at official egg white, all one word. I just get banned off everything else all the time. So <laughs> I don't post on Instagram that much, uh, you know, maybe every week or two. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is that's why I'm not banned on there. So <laughs> in double edged sword. But yeah, follow me on Instagram at official egg white. Yes, indeed. And I will have a link to all three of these gentlemen's YouTube channels in the description for Zakino. I've been Simeon Jimmy. Thank you for listening.